Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all the participants who have joined from different parts of the world. And thank you for joining this, uh, this, uh, this talk and thank economists for organizing such an important and relevant conference, bringing in thought leaders to bring their insights and trying to find solution how to decarbonize and try to meet the uh, Paris climate agreements. My name is Shibu John. I am responsible for the strategy and business development at Primatus Technologies. Primatels is part of the MHI group. And at MHI, we are quite passionate and committed to find solutions to decarbonize the industry and help our customers on the journey to carbon neutrality. The Primatels have been in the business of providing technology for the last 60 years for the steel industry. And we constantly innovate and try to bring solutions and also working very hard to decarbonize the steel industry and bring solutions. Today, I'll be talking about how to make green steel real, what are the challenges, what are the pathways, and what are the key enablers. So uh, talking about the, uh, the steel industry, I would like to give you the extent of the challenge. It is a source of emission that's worth going after. So if you look at the, the global picture of the steel industry, the steel industry uh, uh, produces almost 1.86 billion tons of steel globally, out of which 72% of the steel is produced the primary route, which is using the coke and coal as a reducing agent for the iron ore, and balanced 28% is in the scrap base, which is a secondary production route. And this primary route is primarily responsible for the major emission of the steel. The, the average emission of the steel per ton of steel which is produced is roughly two tons of uh, carbon dioxide per ton of steel produced. So you can say that the carbon dioxide is the main product and steel is the byproduct. So, so this is the uh, uh, for every one ton, there are two tons of carbon dioxide which is produced. And globally, if you see, there are 3.7 gigatons of steel uh, or gigatons of carbon dioxide which was produced, which is equal to almost more than 10% of the global greenhouse gas emissions if you exclude the land and agriculture use. So the low carbon primary steel production route, uh, decarbonizing this is a must for a low carbon future. And if you look at little more a big picture, if you look at just 3.7 gigatons of CO2, if you see the total CO2 emitted in European Union 27 in 2019 was 3.6. So this is more than the total emitted in EU. And if steel would have been a nation, it would have been the third largest emitter of CO2 in the world after China and US. So this is the extent of challenge we are talking about. In terms of the, 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 the demand side also, we see that steel is likely to grow at a CAGR of 0.3% every year increasing to almost more than 2 billion ton by 2050. This is mainly due to the steel which is required in the new energy transition pathway for e-mobility, for green electricity, for the wind power and the infrastructure and the developing economy. So steel is likely to grow and will stay. So we require more and more steel. So this brings a lot of additional challenge in terms of the renewable energy required, in terms of the carbon capture facilities required, in terms of the raw material, in terms of iron ore required. When I talk of the renew renewable energy, if, if you look at uh, decarbonizing or producing steel, 10% of the world steel by hydrogen direct reduction route, we will require roughly around 630 terawatt hour of per annum of renewable energy to produce the green hydrogen of roughly about 14 million tons. So this is the amount of electricity required, which is more than the electricity which is produced today in Germany and France. So the extent of challenge is huge. So if you look at also the, the other aspects in terms of how the carbon pricing or the EU ETS pricing is happening in, in, in Europe, we see the carbon prices have gone up substantially, increased up to 61 euros uh, 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 in this month. And this also brings in additional challenges to the steel maker to, to find ways to decarbonize. So coupled with all, these are the main challenges which the steel makers face. And, uh, and, 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 and if you look at the voices from the industry, if you look at what the producers are saying, what the customers are saying, and how the markets are reacting, we try to capture some of the synopsis. We think the message is sinking in. In the last year or so, the steel industry has collectively got it. This is by the chief scientist from uh, Greenpeace UK who has said, and we believe from primates that green steel is progressively, progressively relatively fast, and we can expect the first wave of net zero production sites within the next five years. We have seen uh, specifically in Sweden, there are two large announcements made by hybrid and S2 green steel who intend to grow into green steel production. And we believe that this is the first plans to come up on stream followed by other plants going to come in. 
And if you look at from the perspective of the steel producers, steel companies are planning massive investment in net zero production. World's largest five steel producers have committed to net zero greenhouse emission by 2050. Uh, right now, uh, almost nine companies worldwide have committed, which is equal to almost 20% of the global uh, uh, steel production to committed, to, committed to have net zero by 2050. So in terms of the cost implications, there's a huge cost impl implication for the transformation. If you look at uh, the announcement made by ArcelorMittal, Postco, Thyssen Group, it runs into billions of uh, uh, dollars. The total transformation expected is likely to be almost 40 to 45 billion dollar every year for the next 30 years. That means we are talking about 1.4 trillion dollar of investment required for the transformation of the steel industry. So it's a huge challenge in terms of capex, in terms of financing, which is required to transform the industry to meet the climate neutral goals. If you look at a positive picture from the from the customer side, we see that there are also demand generations being done. There are a lot of customers. I picked up three industries, uh, automobile, energy, and uh, infrastructure. Uh, if you look at the automobile space, uh, more than uh, eight uh, uh, OEMs have declared to be carbon neutral, and they have uh, uh, decided that they will go for carbon neutral steel in the value chain. By 2040, uh, even Orsted and other companies have, uh, have committed to procure only carbon neutral steel. So this, this brings in a demand side a lot of demand, especially if you look at automobile, only from the announced OEMs. This is going in, uh, from EU and from US. This is going to generate roughly around 20 million tons of uh, green steel requirement by 2030. So we believe that demand will be there. The supply will be lagging because of the investment required and the reluctance or, or, or the delay in the investment by the steel industry. And if you look at from the financial market perspective, we see also a positive development. Uh, we have seen announcement by six global banks coming together to decarbonize the steel, and they are working on a on a framework agreement for a climate aligned finance agreement to support the steel decarbonization. These are positive signals we believe uh, are good helping into the decarbonization of the steel industry. We from Prime Metals, uh, we are responsible for providing the technology. We hear the voices of the customer. And then we try to see what are the way forward to decarbonize. The possible ways to decarbonize by 2050, if you look at the process routes and the emissions from the different process route, the traditional blast furnace today, with, with all the credits for the slag and the, and the process gases, uh, emits almost 1.6 tons of CO2 per ton of liquid steel. So when we look at the 2050 scenario, so this is based on a 2050 scenario, assuming the green electricity is available, the grid is green, with emitting uh, 80 gram of CO2 per kilowatt hour. And with this assumption, we see that the different pathways has a possibility to reduce from uh, the direct reduction EF by almost 65%. The recycled scrap using uh, the renewable energy by almost 90% and the green steel by uh, hydrogen based direct reduction and EF by almost 88 to 90%. So we believe uh, each each steel makers, each, each locations have to deploy various technologies depending on the local situation. So in some situations, maybe a direct reduction would be better and some would be a carbon capture, even the traditional method uh, and also the direct reduction can also employ carbon capture facility to reduce the emission further from the existing uh, blast furnaces by almost 50 to 70% depending on the source. So there are mul multiple pathways and each country, each location, each steel company has to determine what is the best pathway for them in terms of the local infrastructure. And when we look at the pathways, we see three major uh, trends going to happen. One is very clearly the electrification and recycling of scrap, which can happen immediately. This gives an immediate reduction on steel. Uh, so this is easy to do, simpler to do, cost effective. So this can be done immediately. The second pathway is the direct reduction. In this, we see a stepwise approach. We call it a three-step approach. It starts with natural gas to reduce the uh, CO2 by almost 50% today. Uh, blend hydrogen as available up to 30% and then slowly shift to 100% hydrogen. The third pathway is the, for the existing assets. Use carbon capture and storage, especially the assets which are new, especially in Asia. The life of the assets are still quite long. So they are relatively new. In such cases, carbon capture, utilization, storage could be deployed. I will talk on all, each of these uh, shortly. For the electrification, it's basically increased use of scrap and scrap metal. So when we talk of scrap, 
and scrap metal, this can be a, a, a net zero or a, a, a steel. But there are challenges in terms of the what are the type of grades. This could be used for mostly the construction grades. But when we talk about high grade steel, there are issues in terms of quality, in terms of the, the limitation, in terms of the copper in the scrap. So then certain steels could be produced and this could be a quick, quick win. And this has the lowest power consumption. There are worldwide number of installation of such facilities, and this could be done immediately. The second pathway is the direct reduction. In direct reduction, we have uh, three different uh, ideas or pathways in the short term today, which can be done on the medium to long term and on the long, long term. Today, uh, the, a, a Midrex based plan, which Midrex is a partner of Prime Metals, can today reduce the emission by a, roughly around 50 to 60 percent using natural gas. And when hydro hydrogen is available, it could be blended with hydrogen and then it could reduce up to 90% when 100% hydrogen is available. So we are also working on a leapfrog technology called HIFOR. This is to this is also a direct reduction process, but avoids the pelletizing directly use the iron ore concentrate for making direct reduced iron and hydrogen to reduce uh, the, and also reduce the CO2 by 90%. The technology is available at scale today for the uh, for the Midrex based plant. So it, it, the technology risk is not there. On the new technology, we are still under the development stage, testing stage, but the technology is available on, 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 a, on a shaft based, uh, pellet based technology. And if you look at the hydrogen based reduction, it's very clear. Uh, and in terms of the reduction, we, the iron oxide is reduced using hydrogen and it produces water as an end product. The technology has been scaled up. The existing direct reduction plant can be retrofitted or can be injected with hydrogen to reduce the uh, CO2. The limitation is, of course, the price and the availability of the green hydrogen and the scale of hydrogen, which is required. Just to give a, a perspective, at $1.5 of hydrogen cost per uh, k, uh, dollar per kg of hydrogen cost, the steel cost increases by roughly around 24%. So, so even with 1.5, the cost of steel produced through the hydrogen-based route would be high, which will call for a green premium. It would call for policy supports and other carbon tax to make it more uh, uh, adaptable and acceptable by the customer. In terms of the some of the use case references, I would like to talk about uh, some of the uh, projects which we are doing and some of the examples. So this is a project in uh, in Russia, been built um, uh, by Metallo Invest. So they're building the world's largest hot briquetting iron plant of 2.08 million ton. This plant is designed to start with natural gas, which already re reduces the CO2 by 50 percent, and then use. 30% hydrogen as available without no modification. So it's a hydrogen ready plant and subsequently use hydrogen up to 100% when it becomes competitive. So this is a very interesting example of you know, how, how low carbon metallics can be produced at a location where natural gas or the green hydrogen can be available at a very, very competitive price coupled with the iron ore and then ship such low carbon metallics to the places where the other finishing activities can be done. The second example I would like to give is an example in, uh, in Germany, where ArcelorMittal is planning to build up a demonstration plant of 100,000 tons per annum of uh, uh, using hydrogen. And also on the right is, an, is a plant which is existing in Europe. This is the only direct reduction plant in Europe. This is almost uh, all, more than 50 years old, but still working. But this plant is also planning to use hydrogen as hydrogen becomes available. So this is a very interesting example of uh, how the assets can be made today, which is not standard. So we believe even after 50 years, this asset is still viable for the future, uh, viable for the hydrogen economy. And for this uh, uh, is an interesting example how, we, how the steel industry can transition from uh, using natural gas based today and slowly converting that into a hydrogen based plant in the future to reduce the CO2 emission. This plant, uh, uh, Mitsubishi Heavy Industries, Shell, uh, ArcelorMittal, and Waterfall and other parties are joining together and have formed the Hamburg Hydrogen Network and also another initiative called Hamburg Hydrogen Hub for production of, uh, of hydrogen and then supplying hydrogen to the industry. So this is an interesting example uh, uh, project to watch for. The, the third example is a cutting edge technology which Prime Metals has been working for the last five years. Uh, we have uh, set up a, a demonstration plant, a pilot plant in Austria, 
uh, at, uh, at and commissioned at the Austrian steelmaker Voistel Pine site in April 2021. 20, the uniqueness of this is uh, the complete pelletizing step is avoided. Iron ore concentrate is directly used to uh, used to uh, directly reduce, and the emission from this is uh, almost uh, uh, less uh, negligible or close to less than 90% from the traditional uh, plant and using hydrogen. So this is a very interesting. We are doing a lot of test work to validate the result. It is still not ready for commercial, but we believe that this is a future technology and an interesting technology. The third, uh, third aspect is carbon capture and utilization. So especially when we talk about the existing plants, they can go for a carbon capture and utilization for the blast furnaces, which are especially young, and where the car captured carbon can be stored or sque sque sequestered. An interesting example here is uh, is is from uh, from one of the projects which MHI has done in US. So MHI is uh, having a solution called KMCDR process, which uh, which captures carbon up to eighty five to ninety five percent. There are fifteen references worldwide. The largest plant, the picture on the left, is a 4,700 tons per day CO2 plant in Texas for Porta Nova. Similar size plant is required for a 2.5 million ton blast furnace if it has to capture even 50% of the CO2. So there are scale available today, technologies available. And the next largest plant under development is, uh, is a 24,000 tons per day carbon capture plant for a bio uh, energy carbon capture storage facility in CCS. This is under development. So in terms of scale, there is a, a large scale plant available today with a lot of development work done over the last 30 years by MHI. And this could be easily deployed in the steel industry in certain of the locations. The, the second example I would like to uh, give is a carbon capture utilization project, which uh, which uh, Primators, Lancetec and ArcelorMittal is working together. To, and a, a plant is under construction right now in Arcelamethal in Kent, in Belgium, to produce bioethanol. So this is on the utilization story. So if you look at what are the key levers, so the, in terms of use case, I have told what are the use cases, but to make the green still re real, there has to be a uh, lever. So in terms of the key levers, we believe that technology is available, there has to be a supply side and demand side levers. On the supply side, there has to be a significant increase in renewable energy capacity required. Scaling up of the low carbon hydrogen based on electrolysis, pyrolysis, and whichever form a low carbon hydrogen must be available. Price must fall substantially. Infrastructure in terms of pipeline, hubs, storage is very important. Storage of hydrogen, storage of renewable energy. Captured CO2 storage has to be created. Hubs has to be created. One aspect which has not been talked much is the, is the quality of the ore. Uh, such uh, uh, the, the direct reduction require high quality ore. That means the high grade ore has to be made available. More beneficiation is required. More pelletizing is required. Availability and quality of the scrap and collection should increase and breakthrough technologies like hydrogen reduction, carbon capture and storage must scale up. And steel industry should align the capex spend with the net zero ambition of the company and promote material efficiency and circular economy. On the demand side, there has to be a lot of policy support in terms of green steel, contract for difference, for example, as an example. There has to be a fair competitive landscape, for example, like carbon border adjustment mechanism being thought in Europe. A CO2 tax or a tax credit like a 45Q in US, which is used for the carbon capture and utilization would help. Introduce tax benefit for steel users to use green steel a zero or a low watt, a low watt based on the carbon emitted. So there has to be a product labeling in terms of the CO2 which is emitted. Enable large scale green financing for very large capex, establish green product standards and certification. Today there is no standard called what is green. So green has to be first defined what is exactly green in terms of what is the minimum emission required. We believe the standard should be done. There is a group called Responsible Steel is working on setting up such standards. It's a, it's a first move, but this has to be done. Then generate demand for low carbon intensity by products like this has been done by the automobile group and other people, and a public procurement would help. Finally, a green premium and consumer behavior has to change. Finally, to sum up, I would say that reducing emission from steel industry is crucial to averting the climate crisis. Collaboration is critical to success and concerted effort from all stakeholders, steel customers, steel producers, policy makers, energy companies, technology suppliers, and investors are necessary to realize the net zero target. We from Prime Metals Technologies are ready to put our, uh, 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 commit ourselves to support 
in this journey and be a partner to the companies who would like to use the technologies to decarbonize. Thanks for joining me today. And in case any of you would like to reach out to me, please uh, chat, put, put, put your message on chat and I will respond to your chat message. Thanks once again. And thanks. Thanks a lot.